More fun with part two. Cinema 4D release 10. Basic intro. Part two. We have a cube with a texture in the attributes for that selected tag. We have UV mapping, spherical layout, cylindrical layout, flat, cubic, and I'll get into those shortly when I have a texture you can see the difference. Tiling as well. So let's give this texture some texture. Double click on it. Let's go into <coughs> Uh, reflection just for shits and giggles and let's go into let's decrease the brightness of the reflection let's go into load an image from the hard drive <coughs> go into my textures folder Let's get something simple and basic. One of these textures. This one here should do it. Yes. And now, it doesn't look changed, but when you render it, it still doesn't look changed. Well, because we don't have a light source. So let's bring in a light. Pull the light source to the side, to the front, with the, that control, lift it up high, pull it back some more, that's good, well let's lift it up, there we go, take another look, now why isn't it showing the reflection, well, because we dimmed the reflection's power, so let's crank that up, Let's go additive. Or actually, no, let's go multiply. Yes. In color, let's try shutting off the color for now. Close it. Take another look. Well, in this case, it disappears. <coughs> so let's jump to the side view for one thing. Select the cube make it editable, make sure we have the move tool selected, which we do, lift it up in the air, put it on the ground, the blue and red lines in these views represent the ground, the, the, the yellow uh, y-axis, the green line, represents the center of the world. Alright, now we switch back to front view, well perspective anyway. Alright, now let's bring in a floor, something to reflect light back, and we'll just bring in an empty sky just to have something. Now let's take another render. There we go, now we have extra light refraction, reflection, so now we can see what's going on here. Now the object is a bit too reflective, so it's having a hard time displaying the texture. So typically you wouldn't want to put the texture in reflection. Typically you'd want to keep that clear and in color load that image instead. Turn the color back on of course and in reflection Let's dim down the reflection a little bit so it's not too powerful and try again. <coughs> now it's pretty much an empty world so it's not going to reflect very much but if I had other objects out of view they would be reflected onto this cube's surface. So for now, to be able to see the cube, let's shut reflection off. In color, make sure it's full brightness here. Let's go additive. And I'll leave it on normal. That way it shows up nice and bright. 
Let's fade out the design a little bit, though. Actually, we'll just see how it goes as it is. Take another look. A cruddy texture, I know, but it works. Now, we have a light. Its properties are down here. General is where you adjust the light color, the light brightness, the type of light it is, whether it's an, ar an area light limited to a small area, an infinite light like a sun, omni light, um, not quite sure what that means, but a general light type of thing, spotlight. I'm going to leave it the way it is for now. Shadows, do we want to have the light source cast shadows or just be a light source undetermined? We'll have shadows turned on. Do we want the light visible? No, I don't want to see the source of the light. And now, when I render it, not only are we getting dark areas on the box and on the world, but the box itself, in relation to the ground, should be, yes it is, casting a shadow. <coughs> and that's how you generate shadows for objects. Now, as far as working with other things, I'll save that for part three. Stay tuned.